To, dis to discuss some of these reasons, I'm joined now by the motoring journalist Phil Brannigan. He joins me on the line. Phil Brannigan, this statement from Toyota is making it clear that there are a couple of reasons. One is a competitive market, a strong Australian dollar, but it's also laying blame at the feet of reduced vehicle production here in Australia. In other words, Holden and Ford going too. Yes, Kim, that's exactly what it says, and that's exactly what many people in the business have expected, because if, if three car manufacturers in, uh, in Australia were having difficulty holding up the, uh, the local supply chain, it's almost impossible to think that uh, one manufacturer, even one the size of Toyota, would be able to do it by itself. So basically we've got Ford, Holden and Toyota now confirming that they're not going to be making vehicles in Australia anymore. Where does that leave the Australian car industry? Well, the Australian car industry will now start to progress to becoming, well, some would, would say it's not progress, progression at all, but it will be an import-only model. Um, uh, Toyota made uh, over 100,000 cars in Australia last year and 74,000 of those were imported, uh, sorry, were exported, so almost three-quarters of the cars they made here were sent overseas. But uh, Toyota made a lot of its profit in Australia and it, it's the only profitable car maker in this country. And the profit it made was mostly from its imported vehicle. So that's the model that they'll be moving towards. And of course, it'll be a 100% import market from here on. And of course, the ripple effects, particularly in the components is industry, I would imagine uh, would be massive. It will be. And this is a sad day, not only for anybody associated with Toyota, but all those people in the, who work for the companies down the supply chain will be wondering what's going to happen to them now. They'll be looking at overseas market and, markets and trying to figure out whether they can compete because just as it's not necessarily a level playing field so far as making cars is concerned, uh, that, that rule applies to the automotive parts uh, industry as well. So they'll be looking to get whatever assistance they might be able to get from the government. But uh, given what's happened in the last few months with Ford and Holden and now Toyota, I don't think anybody will be holding their breath, ho uh, hoping for a handout from the federal government. So, Phil Brannigan, does this now mean that come 2017, no cars at all, nothing will be made in Australia? Very difficult to see how there will be a reversal in this in this decision. And uh, Mr Toyota, who's a member of the family, by the way, who uh, founded Toyota all those years ago, so this is the Japanese equivalent of a member of the Ford family, mm. saying it was a painful decision. And manufacturing cars in Australia has very much been part of Toyota's DNA since 1961 when AMI made the first Toyota-branded car made outside Japan. They've very much seen Australian manufacturing as a partnership between those in Japan and those in Australia and there's been very strong links. And he also mentioned that the uh, Technical Centre of the Asia-Pacific, a lot of work done on cars that are not even sold in Australia, uh, done right here in Australia by Australian engineers. So uh, Mr Toyota has uh, said before that that will be closing and the engine plant and the automotive manufacturing plant as well. So that does look like a complete shutdown. Phil Brannigan, how does this compare internationally? Because many years ago when the American car industry got in terrible shape, of course the government did bail it out. In fact, took over some of the uh, car companies for a, for a while there uh, before, before selling them back into private hands. Are you aware of any other comparisons where a country that has been making cars and has had several manufacturers making cars, has then moved to a position where not a single vehicle will be made? I can't think of any off the top of my head. I know that there's been a bit of a downturn in the British uh, automotive manufacturing industry in the last few years. They're not making cars in quite the same numbers as they have been. And you would have to think that that is a uh, trend that's going to continue as investment increases in automotive manufacturing in China and then manufacturers are already starting to move into India. Vietnam will be the next country that where these countries start to look at for cheap uh, labour and uh, to build factories. And of course the fastest growing manufacturer, uh, uh, sorry, the fastest growing source of imported cars into Australia over the last five years has been Thailand because the, the manufacturers have had incentives to go there, build plants, employ workers, put in modern robotics, put in modern steel presses and make the cars that we buy here in Australia. And it's, it's almost impossible, unless you look at the badges, to figure out which cars are made in Japan, which cars are made in America, and which cars are made in Thailand. So it has become a global market, and it looks like Australian automotive manufacturing has become a victim of that.